Hello there and welcome along to Tuesday's Ireland M. Um, it's six, the 6th of June. Yes, it is the 6th of June. Hopefully you had a lovely bank holiday weekend and we've got a great show to kick off this short week. We sure do. It's great, isn't it? Bank yeah. holiday. Love it. Coming up, it's been called Hollywood's worst kept secret. What could it be? We're taking a closer <laughs> look at the controversial Ozempic drug that was developed for those with diabetes but has now been used for quick weight loss results. You can't even see me on this new couch. I've got a very dark. We've got very right, dark. Yeah, it's like it's lovely. a sunny day. Anyway, the sun. uh, tomorrow marks the beginning of the leaving cert. I, dun, I know. Dun, dun. But look at the weather. If you're not doing it later this hour, we'll get some helpful and practical uh, last minute tips for students. And she's best known to many for playing Tracy in Fair City. The brilliant Hilda Faye will be here to tell us about taking classic Irish works to the stage. Yes, and Jennifer Rock after nine o'clock is going to be answering all of of your skincare queries. So you can get them into us now. It's 0896 111 We'll be calling out throughout the show. So whatever you want answered, we're going to get as many of them done after nine right here in Ireland AM. Absolutely. Get those texts in. Now, when the sun is shining, there's no better job to have in the world oh. than being a weatherman. Derek, you must be loving it. Oh, absolutely, Tommy. Do you know what? It makes up for all the wet days. Anyway, welcome down here to Slane and County Mead this morning, guys. Uh, what a weekend we had in terms of that weather. Bloom was packed, the beaches were packed. Once again, ice cream conditions out today, with the exception really of uh, Ulster through the northwest, where we're going to see some light rain and drizzle for a time. But we've come down here to the Royal County this morning to time with Virgin Media's two gig full fiber broadband. That's a bit of a tongue twister, isn't it? Because we have got one heck of a prize to give away. We've got a two week, five star luxury luxury camper van trip right around the country with add-ons included so we've got details of that prize later on this morning uh, guys you got to enter what <laughs> it's going to be cool amazing. it's a biggie Just don't think we're allowed to be honest I but well, it does sound entering. great no uh, you, he won't be. i'm entering he won't be. Will. <laughs> no, i'll think of a, a different name all right yeah that's amazing derek okay are you going to be meeting so are you going to be giving them a prize away today or what's the plan yeah, we're, we're going to be heading out the road, so we're going to be taking you on a bit of a tour inside the camper van, so showing you what's in store later on, and it promises to be really, really good. Lovely. Looking ah. forward to that. Thank you, Derek. Uh, right now, it's time to go over to the Virgin Media News. Up here is Ashling Roach. Thanks, Maren. Good morning. One of the most senior figures in the Kinahan cartel has been arrested in Spain. Liam Byrne was arrested in Mallorca on the back of an extradition warrant from the UK over his suspected involvement in firearm offences. This is the arrest by Spanish police, which is being hailed as a significant moment in the battle to dismantle the Kinahan organised crime group. 42-year-old Liam Byrne being led into a Mallorca police station after officers arrested him at a restaurant where he ate with family members. Byrne was described by the Criminal Assets Bureau in the High Court as being involved in violent crime and drug trafficking with connections across Europe. His brother David was also a member of the cartel and was shot dead at the Regency Hotel in Dublin in 2016 as part of the Kinahan Hutch feud. Gardaí are welcoming his arrest and that of 22-year-old Jack Kavanagh. Both men face extradition from Spain to the UK on firearms charges. The UK's National Crime Agency says it shows that those who think they can stay under the radar have no place to hide. Richard Chambers, Virgin Media News. An extra €100 Euro will be added to child benefit payments today in a measure aimed at helping families with the cost of living crisis. The additional payment will be added to the €140 Euro monthly payment for each child. The one-off measure was announced in Budget 2023 and will help more than 650,000 families. For the first time, around 2,000 retained firefighters are taking part in industrial action in a dispute over pay and conditions. Members of the National Retained Firefighters Association and SIPTU have begun a work to rule. However, will respond to fire emergencies. Talks aimed at resolving the row have so far failed. If there's no resolution, 50% of fire stations will close next week and an all-out strike is on the cards for two weeks' time. There is huge frustration in it. Um, I'm third generation uh, in this community. My granddad was one of the original crew members. Uh, the system has not changed since he joined, where um, the country has evolved, but the fire station has set back in the 1940s. We, our work-life balance, again, is so hard. The fire station, or the fire brigade, hasn't moved on with Ireland. We're, we seem to be left behind. 
Britain's Prince Harry is expected to take the stand in London's High Court in his unlawful information gathering action against the Mirror Group newspapers. It's one of a number of cases the Royal is involved in with British tabloids. Mirror Group newspapers is denying Harry's claim. Britain's Prince Harry is expected to attend his high-profile legal case in the High Court in London today. The 38-year-old is due to testify in his phone-hacking group action against the Mirror Group newspapers. His lawyer presented opening statements yesterday in the first of his legal cases to go to trial, but the Royal was not in attendance, something the lawyers for the Mirror Group described as wasting court time. Harry, Britain's Duke of Sussex, is due to take the stand in the case to give evidence and be cross-examined, and will be the first member of the British royal family in more than a century to testify in court. He's expected to describe his anguish and anger over being hounded by the media throughout his life and its impact on those around him. Harry and three others have accused the Mirror of phone hacking and unlawful information gathering. Judges are in the process of deciding whether Harry's two other phone hacking cases will also proceed to trial. Hannah Murphy, Virgin Media News. ...the race to become a US presidential candidate. The former vice president filed paperwork to join a packed field of Republicans, including his one-time commander-in-chief, Donald Trump. Mr Pence has been heavily criticised by his former boss for refusing to overturn Joe Biden's election when tasked with certifying the 2020 presidential results. Apple has unveiled its augmented reality headset, the Apple Vision Pro, as a tech company makes its pitch for the next generation of computing. The Vision Pro is expected to arrive in the US early next year and will cost almost $3,500, putting it at the top end of the market. We compare 14 insurance quotes to get you the best deal. So choose chill and work smarter, not harder. Thank you, Ger, and a very good morning. We're coming to you here from Main Street down in Slane in County Mead this morning. And what a June bank holiday weekend we had in terms of that sunshine. And more of it on the cards out there now as we kickstart a short run into the week. Anyway, let's take a look at how it's shaping up together now with Mark Armstrong with us on cameras. And you'll be glad to hear it is a dry and settled start out there this morning. We are seeing a little bit of patchy mist, a little taster of fog feeding around, but certainly that early morning sunshine will help burn it off pretty lively now those light to locally modern east to variable breezes at times. Now, right across today, that ridge of high pressure once again. It's uh, week three, in fact, in the driving seat. Keeping conditions dry, sunny, and settled. Now, the caveat in it today is to parts of Ulster and across the northwest, where we're going to see mm, some light rain, light drizzle there for a time, but elsewhere, that sunshine certainly winning out. Now, in terms of those temps, a little bit cooler into the eastern half of the country. We're talking highs there around 17 to 20 degrees, but as we work our way into the Midlands through parts of the west, it's going to edge up pretty nicely once again we're talking valleys there 23 24 a possibility of 25 degrees so for the third week running west is best in terms of those valleys finally then tonight mainly dry and settled once again some patchy mist a taster of shallow fog as well feeding its way tonight into your wednesday morning with values back to around 7 to 13 degrees so that's how we're shaping up here with a sunny start in slain and county Meath. we'll be back again live at 7 35. <laughs> Chill Insurance work harder, so you can work smarter. We compare 14 quotes to get you the best deal. It's time now to take a look at this morning's papers. Most are dominated with the arrest of Kinahan Cartel member Liam Byrne. We're going to start with the Irish Times and its headline says Liam Byrne to face firearms charges after arrest in Mallorca. The Dubliner is alleged to have run the Kinahan Cartel's operations in the Republic. His detention is seen as one of the most significant moves against the cartel members since the Kinahan Hutch feud began eight years ago. The Herald leads with a similar headline, Cartels Burn Snared at Family Dinner. Kinahan Cartel member Daniel Byrne, who was arrested in Spain while eating with family members, now faces extradition to UK to face serious charges of supplying firearms. The Sun goes with sunburned. The Kinahan chief has been accused of attempting to supply guns that were seized in Newry County Down, which includes three handguns, a rifle and four machine guns. The Star's front page would Sir care to see the a la cartel menu. Byrne is facing up to 20 years in prison for firearms offences as well as the additional charges of preventing to pervert the course of justice. The mirror goes with Last Supper for Kinahan Chief Byrne. The dramatic arrest came shortly after Byrne flew into the Spanish sun from his bolt hole in Dubai where he and several other Kinahan members have been hiding in recent years.
Now, in other news, the Daily Mail leads with NCT firm to be fined millions for long delays. Minister for Transport Jack Chambers described attempts by Aplus to run the service as a complete failure as motorists face months of delays in getting a test, with some having to wait into 2024 for an appointment. Yeah, we'll have more on that in just a little while. The examiner leads with patient rang 999 before dying alone in hospital. An elderly woman who was actually just 78 at the time, it's hardly elderly, she died alone in a Cork hospital, made a 999 call to Gardaí from her ward, asking them to not forget her. Also featured on the front page is a photo of Minister for Trade, Simon Coveney, who says, I'm not going anywhere, putting to bed rumours that he will not run or change constituencies at the next general election. Cities outside capitals suffer biggest spike in crime rates. An analysis of crime figures by the Irish Independent reveals that 252 Garda stations nationwide witnessed crime levels in 2022 that were beyond pre-pandemic levels, including 119 stations that recorded a five-year peak. That is, of course, the front page of the Irish Independent. Now, after the break, we will be taking a closer look at the biggest stories of the day with Anton Savage. We're also going to have something fun because the big stories are it's there a, a lot. More quirky um, as well. We want to hear the weird things that you've taken on holiday. Oh eight nine six triple one triple one. We're going to hear the weird it's... things that Warren takes on holiday to get thinking too. Oh eight nine six triple one. Just a giant blowout of Tommy Bow. That's it. From my, as my Lilo. That's oh. it. Have you at all times? We'll find out more after the break. <laughs> the car. You are very welcome back. News Talk's Anton Savage joins us now to take a closer look at this morning's top story. Good morning to you, Anton. Morning. Great to have you with us. Uh, let's start off with the story that's dominating all the papers this morning, the arrest of Liam Byrne in Mallorca. Yes, you, I mean, your own news reported on this fairly extensively earlier on. Um, Liam Byrne, who is reported to be... It seems to be part of a sort of a subdivision of the Kinahan crime cartel because he and uh, his associates are known as the, the Byrne Crime Organisation. There's been an international arrest warrant out for him for some time for firearms offences. He was uh, picked up in Mallorca while having dinner with his uh, two children, uh, both of whom are minors, so there, there's no details given in any of the reporting about him. Uh, but it's being seen as obviously a very significant arrest, and it is part of that whole movement that we saw. I mean, particularly once the Americans got involved, and they didn't get involved by chance. They got involved because the Irish Gardaí went to some effort to get them involved. Mm. But you have the DEA, you have the Irish Gardaí, and you have now international arrest warrants looking for Daniel Kinahan and the rest of the cartel. Um, he was the brother of David Byrne, who kind of kicked off the Hutch Kinahan feud uh, eight years ago, which has led to 18 people dying. Um, so it is it's in incredibly the serious yeah. in the Regency yeah. att attacks. Um, a lot of the times, though, it's often thought that members of Irish cartels, who are very big in, in Europe, that they can happily travel between Dubai and Spain. It's always like they're heading off to Spain. This is... This is this significant. Is, this is huge in this regards to that, right? And again, a little bit of that is the American involvement because it does... The Americans have, of all international police forces, they would have the greatest level of, of global reach. So yeah. the DEA has been very helpful. But let's be clear, the Irish, again, we talk about punching above our weight. One of the areas we punch above our weight in is European policing. You look at somebody like assistant, former Assistant Commissioner uh, Mick O'Sullivan, who's now one of the most significant gar or police, police, as now would be, in uh, European European policing. Yep. So there's there's a lot of effort going into it. And the Spanish have been extremely helpful, according to the guards, mm. in facilitating these kind of arrests. There OK, right. very good. The, the net is definitely getting a lot tighter at the minute around that. Let's move into another story at the minute, which we hear a lot on this show about crime rates around Ireland. So it looks like, well, half of the guard yeah. stations around the country are saying that they've seen an increase. But then it's actually probably more than half seen a drop in crime. Is that yeah, right? it's one of those where you look at it at first glance, you think, oh, that's terrible. And you yeah. say, hang on a minute, maybe it's not. Because the Irish Independent has done a study that says that uh, of the 500-ish something Garda stations, about 252 have seen an increase yeah, in crime, most of which is in urban settings outside Dublin. So you're talking mm -hmm. Limerick, uh, Cork and uh, Waterford. However... 
the other half of the police stations or guard the stations have seen a decrease in crime. Yeah. So when you net it all off, we don't seem to be in the, in the middle of a crime epidemic. If you're looking for what the figures show that's interesting, it is that thing that it isn't Dublin that is showing the biggest lift in crime, that the biggest lift in crime is cities outside of Dublin, although the single biggest crime area, unsurprisingly, Dublin city yeah. centre, where one guard the station alone averages 25 mm. crimes reported to it every day. Wow. Which wow. is a huge amount. Uh, of the of the guard the stations that drop, do we know if they are fully serviced 24-7 guard the stations? Or are there some like in townlands that are open for a few hours here and there and then you've got to go to a bigger guard the station? Could there be a correlation between those things? There very well might be, although I don't think the issue, again, when we say outside Dublin, the figures, the, the increase doesn't relate to rural as much as it does cities, cities. outside Dublin. So okay, it seems so to be predominant the cities area. And then the area, I think the one, the crime that had the single biggest increase, I think was murder, was the one that had the, the single biggest spike. Just yeah, the, the murder, is. is it? Yeah, Just yeah. the murder. Uh, okay. Well, risen by 30%. <laughs> yeah, no, I assume that's because there's relatively small numbers. Do you know, like well, if you take shoplifting, yeah. there's lots Homicides, and lots of them. Yeah. Thankfully, there is slightly less murder. Uh, so it's There's a, the analysis you bring me in for. Uh, Guard resourcing is obviously one of the big uh, issues that they have with the bath as well. Yep, but, absolutely. Um, yeah, quite frightening. When that's now, something that we have been talking about for quite a long time on this show, whether it is um, a good thing or a bad thing, it is uh, a legal requirement and yes. it is the NCT test. Yeah. And this is a private entity. We, years ago when this was brought in, to make the roads safer. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, which it, it doesn't. Which it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, it was farmed out. And we can say that, right? It doesn't. It, doesn't. it was farmed out to private entities. Now, and, and let's be clear, because people will rightly accuse us of being yep. facetious, because it's one of those things that feels like it should make a difference. We get test cars, therefore things get safer. The, it, it just statistically makes pretty much no difference. The RSA's own numbers say not 10% of accidents are caused by roads, uh, by car uh, defects, not 5%, not 1%. Point seven of a percent. So mm -hmm. all of this is, is something yeah. of a, a side issue, particularly given the billions we pour into it. Despite that, we now all have to have the test and there's now a backlog of 440,000 people waiting for the test because of the delays. Junior Minister or Minister for State Jack Chambers has come out and said that Aplus, which is the Spanish company that runs yeah. the NCT in Ireland, should be fined for this delay. Theoretically, it is possible to get your NCT for free if you're waiting more than 28 days to get it. Mm -hmm. But it's one of those things where the moon and Jupiter has to align just right to get through all the terms and conditions because you can't have turned one down. You can't have gotten in touch within seven days of your own being expired, blah, 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 blah. But if you manage to meet all of their criteria, you could get a free NCT when you eventually get your NCT. But we're still not going to talk about the fact of why do we have an NCT? It's yeah. staying. Like, it's, like, this is it. It's like the USC, it came in... That's exactly it. And it has the feel. I mean, I, I, I said on air um, many years ago that, that just the factual, the simple factual reality that it doesn't make a big difference to uh, road safety. And I got an extended letter from the RSA that essentially said, tut tut. So I said, well, OK, lads, Give, give me the figures. evidence and nothing ever came out of it. So it, there is a cynical view that says that it was originally brought in to help foster the German car industry because it keeps a turnover in cars. Does it do any harm? No, but it's a lot of effort and money to throw something that makes no difference. Yeah, but for cars out there that actually people just drive and drive and drive and never get service. For, yeah, I mean, if you look, what, what but is that it doesn't actually... really happen anymore because the insurance industry and also the tax right, industry yeah. are regulating that. And cars are now so ex exponentially safer than they've been. Like, what are the things that? And again, the, let's let's give credit where it's due. The things that the guards, the RSA, and the system has had a great success in in reducing road deaths, speeding, drink driving, and being mm -hmm. young men. They're the yeah. things that cause road deaths. Uh, and, oh, eight, and they're seeing record figures in that as well in one of the papers as well this morning. Yeah, oh, eight, nine, six, triple one, triple one. one of the guys in here this morning was telling me he registered for an NCT January 2024. That's the That's earliest. That's the earliest. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, there you go. January. That's well, one of 440,000 people. he could get outside Dublin, which I did tell him, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't get <laughs> outside Dublin. That's crazy talk to him. That's just he the sort of thing. Too, he wasn't too sure if the and car again, would make it that far. There are all these issues that the guards have said, listen, you have applied for your NCT, therefore your insurance is uh, completely and utterly valid. There's nothing that can happen uh, in relation to that. And maybe you're a huge fan of the NCT and you were against us here. We would love to hear from I you this morning. Oh, eight nine six triple one triple one. OK, now, finally, Daily Mail has talked to us about the peculiar items that people decide to pack on holidays. Yeah, to, to quote Scrooge, look, a toaster. People are travelling with toasters. <laughs> now, 
I don't want to be all jingoistic and bigoted. This is a study of the UK, so maybe they're different. <laughs> I highlight in particular that apparently 40% of people travel with beans. I don't think the Irish travel no. with beans. Sausages, though. Oh, you can't travel with sausages. Huh? Irish sausages, of you a lot with, of people travel. travel with a bag load of raw meat. You get well, it in, listen, yeah, you buy 40... it in the duty-free. <laughs> Um, and you bring it with you, raw meat. you buy it in the duty free and you bring it over and get it in the fridge when you can. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Forty seven percent of respondents on the UK have said that they packed food and drink. And the tea bags, crisps, tea bags. tin food, baked beans, but I'd say no. sausages are a big thing no, in Ireland. No, not, not tea. I never understood the tea bags thing. Tea bags were in there, um, crisps, beans. The ones that amazed me most though were cleaning products. The toaster yeah. and cutlery, cutlery and plates. Yeah. People going, I'm not, I'm not eating off that, <laughs> not eating off that Spanish yeah. plate. <laughs> I'm bringing my own plates. Oh my God. And what about the weight of plates? Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> what's in your bag? In. Nothing but plates. <laughs> your cutlery. I mean, plates, you tin of beans, and a toaster. <laughs> in the hotel. You're the going other to. thing it revealed, though, was that people overpack underpants and socks. They always overestimate how many underpants they're going to need. And our floor managers behind the camera going, oh God, yes. No. Oh God, yes. That's why they give me a kettle in a hotel Another room. story on the front of a lot of the papers is Holly Willoughby. We would love to get your take oh. now, but we are going to be discussing it okay? later in the show. <laughs> are you OK? Uh, we'll talk after about it later in the show. 0896 Please get in contact with us with the weird, the, the weird and wonderful things that you take on holiday. We would love to hear from you. Uh, Anton Savage, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we've got lots coming up on Ireland Day and we'll talk to you in just a few minutes. Welcome back. Now, uh, this drug was originally licensed for type 2 diabetes, uh, diabetics in Ireland. The azempic drug and its uses has sparked debate in recent weeks around the world. It sure has. Here to discuss is the HSE lead for obesity, Professor Don O'Shea, and weight loss patient Ashley O'Driscoll. Good morning to you both. Thank morning. you so much for you. coming in. First of all, I think, Don, we should talk to you about ozempic. Give us a little bit of an explainer mm. on what exactly it is. Okay, so Ozempic, I've been working with a hormone called GLP for 25 years. Ozempic is that hormone uh, turned into a drug, like insulin is a hormone that treats diabetes, yep. uh, and that's been turned into a medication for diabetes, like thyroid hormone is used to treat people who have an underactive thyroid. Uh, GLP is a hormone, or Ozempic is a hormone that your body releases after you eat a meal that makes you feel full, that makes you burn energy a little bit more, uh, and that also causes insulin release. So that's why it has been available as a treatment for diabetes. Yeah. But the other actions, the making you feel a bit fuller and the making you burn a bit more energy uh, are the reasons it's effective in obesity. And we have now finally accumulated the evidence and medicine moves slowly. Mm. Uh, we have finally accumulated the evidence to say that Ozempic and other treatments that are based around the same hormone are effective treatments for obesity. We've never had an effective treatment for obesity and it has the potential to transform lives. Up until now we've been treating the complications of obesity. Yeah. We've been treating the depression, we've been treating the diabetes, we've been treating the joint pain, mm. we've been treating the blood pressure. Ashley, you had all of those problems a year ago. You have responded very well to Ozempic yep. and those problems are better. OK, so Ozempic, like many drugs, they're originally brought on the market to treat one thing and then we find out, oh, it can treat a plethora of things. It can, it can, it can have side effects. Other things. Yes. So up until now, we've been treating the complications of obesity and obesity causes over 200 chronic diseases and we've been treating those diseases now we can get back to the root cause yeah. and treat the obesity and those other complications improve. OK, so in, I think it was like October, November last year was the first time I'd ever heard of Ozempic and it was because it was all over the place because there were celebrities who were very small people yeah. to begin with and it was all like they're taking Ozempic, they're taking Ozempic to, to lose an awful lot of weight. Ashley, can you tell us your story, what happened and what life was like for you? So I started on Ozempic on the 27th of June, 2022. So I'm coming up now on my one year anniversary. Um, at my heaviest, I was 22 stone just before I started. So I'm quite tall. So 22 stone would be quite large. It was 134 kgs. I had tried five times over the last six years to try and lose the weight with gym, walking, exercise, diet, calorie deficit, and just wasn't working. Um, so I went down and I spoke to my GP and he 
basically he was a two pronged approach. He goes, I'm going to prescribe you Ozempic, um, but I'm also going to do your referral to the weight loss clinic for um, basically weight loss surgery. Um, so off I went, started on my Ozempic. Um, I started doing a video diary of it because I wanted to hold myself accountable. Yeah. So each day I would record myself taking, or each week record myself taking it, weigh myself each day, weigh, uh, record myself going out and getting my steps in, what I'm eating and so on. Because it's a once a week injection. It is, yeah, it's yeah. once a week. Um, so after four weeks I went up a dose and after another probably six weeks and so on. Um, and fast forward a year later I've lost 46 kilos. Um, which is seven stone, so I'm now down to 87.5 kilos. So in under a year, you've lost that amount of yeah. weight. I mean, it, that's really remarkable results. Yeah. Is it, were you aware of it when you went to the GP? Did you have to ask him for it? Yeah. And do you have to pay for it as well? Yeah, so I had gone, I had heard about Ozempic and um, I knew Saxenda was coming out, which didn't come out until January this year, but Ozempic was the only one at the time. So I kind of knew about it and I studied it and I just went down to him and I said, this could work for me. I was like, I'm morbidly obese. I have a health condition. And that's really, really important for people to understand that, um, Mirren, like you said, the celebrities were posting about this. They were taking this um, and that ruined it for everybody because people are now coming on, like I promote on my social media and people are coming on saying, oh, you're only taking this because <coughs> celebrities posted it. Mm -hmm. Post about it. We can't get it because of you. And people need to understand that obesity is a disease. It's a disease that requires mm. treatment, the treatment of which is Ozempic. And not only are you are you helping to treat this disease, you're, you're treating a whole load of diseases in the process and people need to have access to this treatment. But what's the cost then on it as well? At, at the moment, I pay 300 euro every month for mine. Um, okay. It's about 150, 160, depending on the pharmacy. Some charge 170 per pen. Um, and I pay 300 a month. And then uh, for the drug payment scheme, obviously people who have diabetes, yeah. they're getting it on if they're on the drug payment yeah. scheme. So that's that's one aspect of it. Uh, in relation to your life has changed, you just talked about a, a massive seven stone weight loss. Yeah. But what else? Because we are talking, Donald, you've been on here before talking about the plethora of issues that come with obesity and how we need to start treating them properly. And we're not talking about people who are like 10 pounds overweight. What was going on? I, like I said, I was 134 kgs and I'm about five foot 10, five foot 11, quite tall. So for someone of that weight and that, that height, I was very big and I was joint pain, could barely walk down the road. Actually, a couple of weeks before I went on a Zampic, I'd gone to my GP because I thought I'd torn something in my knee and I was doing the mini marathon at the end, at the start of June last year. And I was like, why am I in so much pain? And first thing, Ashley, your weight, that's why. Okay. And he was right because as soon as I lost the weight, no more joint pain. I had really high blood pressure up until probably about three or four months ago when it's no, it's now normal. Okay. Um, and Breathlessness. I was, yeah, Even breathlessness that. as well. Walking up and down stairs, I couldn't do it. So we're seeing the health system is under huge strain at the minute and obesity is probably a big portion of that as well, Donald. Mm -hmm. Like, could this, if this was to be prescribed to a lot more people than just diabetes at the moment, like, could this take huge pressure off the, off the health system going forward? So actively uh, preventing and actively treating obesity are two different things. And we now know that prevention of obesity, which is a uh, lifestyle at a population level, is really important. Ashley is proof that eat less, move more is not the treatment for obesity once you have the disease of obesity. She said five times she did the exercise calorie deficit. Mm -hmm. uh, and that only allows a very small shift in your body weight because your body defends its weight. Uh, the HSE has licensed a, a form of this treatment for people with obesity who have severe and complex obesity, which is a BMI, a particular cutoff, plus some complications. What we need to do is we need to see over the next number of years, we need more access to treatment and we need more access to treatment earlier in the disease of obesity. And I'm just wondering, Donald, because it, it does sometimes feel that fat phobia is the one phobia that is people are happy to kind of express out loud. Correct. Um, and an awful lot of people are like, this is, you know, this is taking shortcuts, you know, this is a quick fix and nothing's going to happen. Is there a level, because it, people have talked about the weaning off of Ozempic, mm -hmm. like when you reach a target weight that you have for people who have been obese, that the weight will go back on? Uh, we know uh, for people who have blood pressure that they go on the blood pressure treatment for life. If you stop the blood pressure treatment, it goes back yeah. up. Stop your anti-epilepsy medication, you are more li likely to have seizures. Uh, so with obesity, any of the medications we have, you stop them and the, the weight goes back on. This is by far the most effective medication we've ever had and we're seeing exactly that. When it's stopped, 
the weight goes up. Uh, just quickly, Ashley, as well, because I know that Noro Nordisk, they have said that this is just for diabetes, but now, of course, it is being prescribed for other people. So there's a huge shortage here in Ireland. Mm. Is it very difficult to get a hold of? Uh, nearly impossible. If you can get hold of Ozempic, <laughs> you might as well go out and do the lotto because that's literally what it's like. I got mine two and a half weeks ago and I rang 26 different pharmacies before I could get it. Okay. And I'm due my next one now at the end of June. And it's going to be a stress so again. The demand is huge. And I'm assuming there's an issue there with some people going, as you said, people are shouting at you on, on your TikToks mm -hmm. yeah. when you're going, no, 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 I'm using this for a real reason. Yeah. Other people are like, you know, yeah. I need this, I'm diabetic, you don't actually need this. Yeah. Is that happening? Yeah, there's a lot of people saying you're taking it away, like even private messaging me kind of saying, like really angrily, you need to come off this medication, uh, you're taking it away from people who have diabetes. I have a medical condition that requires treatment, the treatment of which is Ozempic, and that's very important for people to understand. Whereas from your point of view, you are no longer clogging up your GP system because you don't have to go as much anymore. Exactly, because yeah. my health has dram drastically improved since I started taking this and since I started losing up the weight. Weight, being overweight, carries a whole of length of complications. So, yeah. Yeah, and I've asked Ashley to link with the Irish Coalition of People Living with Obesity because what we need is more of the patient voice yeah. Yeah. informing the general public. It's uh, we've been saying it for years, even on this couch. I know, yeah. But now we have the patient voice becoming well, front and centre yeah. and really demanding. It's is very, treatment. very interesting. Listen, we'd love to hear from you this at home as well. Oh eight nine six triple one triple one. Ashley O'Driscoll, of course, you are using and showing the great benefits of Ozempic and Professor Professor Donald O'Shea, HSE lead on obesity. Thank you both for coming in Thank this you. morning. Time for a quick short break. Uh, we'll be back with you in a couple of minutes. You're very welcome back now. Of course, tomorrow marks the beginning of the Leaving Cert. Good luck. The nerves are no doubt kicking in. They are indeed. And we're going to have some advice right now from guidance, guidance counsellor Donica O'Mahony. Donica, it's lovely to have you here. Thanks so much. Listen, every year we sit on this couch as people who haven't done our Leaving Cert in years and been like, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. No one cares. Unfortunately, when you're about to do it, there is a whole load of stress involved. Yeah, there's a lot of stress. Well, look, there's about 135,000 students starting a state exam tomorrow, so between leaving and junior cert. So just over 60,000 uh, leaving certs will be sitting down to take their exams tomorrow. And yes, there's lots of stress and pressure on the students uh, coming in. But as we guys were talking there just a few minutes ago, it shouldn't be something that defines you or that will make up that much of your identity as you get older. As we said, nobody really asks you about your Leaving Cert results in, in a few years' time. So with the stress going, if people want to check out, there's a page Leaving Cert Guidance on Instagram. Yeah. There's loads of advice on there. But for our students, you know, being prepared, I suppose, is key. What would you say to students a day out? Yeah, so being prepared is so key and it's very different than when we sat at Leaving Cert as well because now your exams are correct online so your exams are scanned and sent off to the examiner so with that you're only to do your exams in blue or black pens so no red pens green pens no gel pens no highlighters anything like that because it's not going to be picked up on the scan so only blue or black pen now if you want to use a highlighter or something that's not going to be corrected that's fine yeah. if you like to you know mark your questions or anything like that that's okay blue and black pen and yes you can use a pencil for diagrams and geography or if you're doing problems in maths or something but just make sure it's a heavy lead as well. Oh my god I would have failed my economics <laughs> if I couldn't have coloured in my graphs. Yeah. My god that was yeah. why I passed. I'm yeah. sure of it. There's so many pretty highlighters. Um, if someone feels like an exam has gone badly right? They've probably got another exam the next day or yeah. the day after. So what can they do? Yeah, well, so the first thing is relax and no postmortems. So the postmortem is the worst where you go out and chat with your friends yes. and say, what did you get for that? What did... And then you start to feel really bad about yourself. So try and relax with the postmortems. And even with family um, asking as well can be quite stressful. So as even a parent, it's really just to support and be kind of conscious of what you say as well, because it could be picked up the wrong way. It is a very stressful time uh, for leave inserts. Uh, so just be careful. Uh, and, okay. and a lot of the students who are doing these leave insert exams this year, sorry, never have sat a state exam because of COVID. Yeah. So there's a, it's heightened exam pressures at the minute for them. So is it just a case of, like, have you any tips to kind of try and stay calm? Yeah, well, no, you're absolutely right pressure has really mounted and we see evidence of that because no state exam has been sat, there was no junior cert. And yes, yeah, so it's like anything, you just need to be really prepared, really good night's sleep. That's key. We see evidence that 
pulling an all nighter is worse than getting eight hours sleep. So it doesn't do anything for you. Mm. Stay hydrated. So there's actually evidence of that. There's evidence. So as the, opposed the, to like cramming through the night to exactly, try and get blasted yeah. in. So there's actually groups done. So one group was given an hour to study, then eight hours sleep. Another group was given the whole night to study. They all sat an exam the next day, and the people who got the eight hour sleep actually did way better in their exams than the people who didn't. Mm. So yeah, it's like you know, if you're an elite athlete, you want to hydrate, you want to eat well, you want to sleep well. It's the same if you want to perform very well in your leaving cert, you have to look after yourself. So then maybe kind of don't eat after six o'clock, drink away, stay no caffeine, stay off the old phone. So the and caffeine is actually the big one because that can add to your anxiety as well. Yeah, Monster, like if you've done Red three Bull. Red Bulls today, yeah, yeah. you're not sleeping tonight. You know you're not sleeping tonight and it heightens the anxiety as well. We actually saw, chatted to somebody last week as well but they said even bringing in a bottle of water into the exam, the level of performance, even just from having a bottle of water makes such a difference, yeah. just being hydrated. Yeah. And that's true. So bring in your bottle of water, your pencils, your pens, your calculator. But just another little tip is smart watches. You're not allowed to bring them into the exam hall either because obviously that can age you a little bit. So no smart watches oh, if you I have I don't one. believe you. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. You're still allowed to bring in log books. Yes, you can have a log Oh, book. thank yeah, yeah. God. What would we do without the log with what the cover in behind? <laughs> <laughs> he never did that. No one ever did that. That's Here's not a thing that ever happened. That's my tip for you right there. Um, listen, Donico Matty, thank you so thank much you. for coming to give us that. If people want to find out more, leaving cert guidance on Instagram. And of course, you're a journalist with the Irish Independent as well. Thank you so much thank you, Luke. for that. Uh, 0896111111. Are you doing the leaving? Are you nervous? The memories. Uh, yeah, it comes flooding back every year, doesn't it? It's awful. Um, uh, coming up in the next hour, Susie Lee is here. She's going to be making delicious barbecue chicken and broccoli salad. Perfect pre-leaving, are we going to call it a pre-leaving cert meal? And we're meeting uh, a remarkable Dublin woman who'll be sharing her story of growing up in the last of Dublin City's tenements during World War II. We'll see you back here very soon. Hello, welcome back to Ireland AM. We're going to be hearing a powerful story of Dublin woman Peg McManus, whose new memoir details her journey from the Dublin tenements to become one of Ireland's foremost campaigners for women's rights. We'll be chatting to her in just a little while. Well, later on, we're also going to be sitting, uh, sitting down with the star of stage and screen, Hilda Faye, is going to be here. Yes, plus Jennifer Rock, uh, the skin nerd, will be here and she's going to help us with our skin for summer. She's going to be answering your questions so you can send them in to us. It's 89 6 one and we'll get those after nine o'clock. Now, most important of all, though, Susie Lee is here. She's on Cook and Judy's. Good morning to you, Susie. Morning. Hello, Susie. What have you got for us? I am going to make you a really simple broccoli salad. Okay, but it's really crunchy, really tasty, um, and it's kind of sweet, sour, kind of tangy. But then I'm going to also have a lovely bit of chicken on the side with it. So it's sort of like a barbecue. Okay. Thing, if you have a barbecue. Kind of an outdoorsy salad. Like yeah, it, summer. Just it's when the sun salad. is shining. Exactly. You kind of just feel you need to have a nice yeah. salad, don't you? Absolutely. Sounds delicious. Looking Gorgeous. forward to it. Thank I you, am Susie. looking forward to that lump of broccoli there as well. <laughs> ready to go. Derek <laughs> is in County Mead this morning. Derek, how are you getting on? Oh, well, Tommy, you uh, yeah, this? you're back on the money because outdoors is the new indoors. We've landed down here at Rambling Rovers Luxury Motorhome Rental. And what a prize we have for you uh, later on this morning, guys. We've got the sausages here on the barbecue because uh, to celebrate Virgin Media's two gig full fibre broadband rollout, uh, we have got this beautiful luxury camper van trip to give away. It's a five star. It's a two week trip. Look, we've got the uh, we've got the oven here. We've got this gorgeous fridge. Out in here. Look, we've got a gorgeous bed here as well, guys. <laughs> Who wants to join us? We'll have details of that prize in and around 8.45 this morning. You won't want to miss it. Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> I don't know if I want that bed after Derek lying all over it. Thanks very much. <laughs> uh, a lot of texts coming in. So we did try and put it out there about people going on their holidays and packing unusual things that people were actually packing cutlery, plates, mm -hmm. a toaster. Mm -hmm. um, Teresa says, I make a homemade barn brack and take it on holidays every year. It's now a family joke, but they all love a slice of it when waiting in the airport <laughs> and sitting at the pool. <laughs> Barn brack, really? So you know when you're like waiting for it to tick to 12 so you can have your first glass of wine and a Sorry. slice of barn brack. I love it, Teresa. Pat says, I always pack my travel kettle, coffee and a mug. You can't get a decent mug of coffee on the continent. Surely you can get a Where decent... it's known for coffee. I'm sure you can get hot water. But hold on. They're in little cups. There's only a mouthful in them, so you can't be dealing with that. You need the proper, oh, yeah, co need proper coffee proper jitters. Mug. I get that, Pat. If I, I was saying there, if I were to take anything, I'd take a pillow, if I could fit it, obviously, but I don't. But 
There is one thing about I thought hotel, you were talking about a pillow sheet, a pillows. pillow. Yeah. Go Whenever on, we used treat to go yourself. on the rugby, we used to always, I used to always take a pillow because you'd be in so many different hotels and the pillows would be a disaster. Can you imagine them there, all of them hugging their little pillows, <laughs> the Irish team. Oh, can't we can't live without our pillows. Anything else, but I got my pillow. And we've got um, Anne in studio here has to bring a tea towel. What would you take? I, I told you, I bring my fire stick so I can watch my television programmes. <laughs> Obviously, it's the most important thing on holidays. I need to be able to watch my TV. Forget about the sunshine. And I, I want bring, to watch the telly. And I bring my, my, my tea bags. Oh, yeah, tea bags. Have well. to bring tea bags. You always regret it if you don't bring them. 089 6111 Yeah, can you beat a fire stick or a pillow? Let us know. Uh, now, we're also talking about massive shortages of Zem Ozempic, mm. the weight loss uh, pill. And, Diabetes and weight loss, yeah. Uh, Donald, who's a HSE lead of obesity, really interesting to hear from this. Uh, Emers has sent in, it's not right to preside, uh, prescribe Ozempic to non-diabetics. I am di diabetic, I'm also obese, and I can't get Ozempic due to people misusing it. And uh, Donald, who is a HSE lead on obesity in Ireland, professor, um, said that it's not misusing it to prescribe it to people who are obese. He says obesity is a real it's a disease it and is, it's something it's that has to be what treated. The drug company prescribed, you know, made it for initially. Originally, but sure, so it's been many. There for 15 years. But sure, it's the same as penicillin. That wasn't what it was originally uh, for either. And I think this, what Dan said, as both a user and prescriber, it's been transformative in the treatment of obesity. Drugs are commonly prescribed off label yeah. by doctors and pharmacists. They know this. The supplier, who, who this is the problem, really needs to up their game and meet the supply levels that exist globally, because yeah. this isn't just Ireland. I like the level of demand for this is massive. But worldwide. the issue that has been drawn attention to by both Donal and Ashley over here this morning are people who are not overweight in any way and do not and are not considered obese, who are getting and their doctor to kind of... prescribe it to them because they want to lose a stone and like that's not what it's for. Well that's the issue. Yeah, people just want to drop off a few pounds yeah. and they take the Zempic pill for a great. couple or uh, injection. Um, we'd love to hear from you on those things. We're also going to be talking about leaving search. We've talked about it and we've got some of your messages as well. Oh eight nine six triple one triple one to get in contact with us here on Ireland. Send us in anything funny you taking holidays and you a bit of a laugh. <laughs> now, uh, coming up after the break we are meeting author and Dubliner Peg McManus who will be telling us about her remarkable life story. It really is quite mm -hmm. incredible. See you very shortly. Now, from go growing up in the tenements of 1940s Dublin to becoming a counsellor and working tirelessly for women's rights, author and activist Peg McManus has seen Ireland change beyond recognition. And Peg joins us now to talk about her brand new memoir, I Will Be Good. Peg, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? It's lovely to have you here because saying the word tenement. Yes. Thinking about tenement, something that I learned about in history. Yes. You lived in a tenement. I know. And I, I was talking to my granddaughter this morning. She was saying to me, I, I'm reading the book. And I said, um, what do you, what do you like about it? She said, I cannot believe anybody lives like that. It's, it's, it's just not in her living memory yeah. or experience. What was it like? Yeah. What was it like? Well, you see, you know, people say we lived in one room. There were, there were um, my parents and my sister and I and my brother. So, and then there were two other children born in that. They died. Yeah. But small children, have, and especially at that time, there was nothing to compare it to. So we couldn't say it was horrendous. It was life. Mm. It was what we knew. Um, and when you're very small, you don't feel deprived because you don't know you're deprived. Yeah. yeah. And it's okay. In, in the 84 years, I suppose, since you, you know, since you grew up and lived in a tenement first space in your life and, and now, and of course we do have a homeless crisis and we've got people uh, living in great deprivation, but I'd say we don't know what poverty is in comparison to what it was then. No. No. It, we no, we don't absolutely. I mean, people. I don't see anybody barefoot now. Yeah. But people did. Children did not have shoes. Yeah. There wasn't enough to eat. Um, but I don't have a sense of being poverty stricken. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. I absolutely don't have. I don't think small children do know 
maybe in, you know, concentration camps, but living in a tenement home, that was what we knew. Yeah. And the food we got was what we eat. Yeah. And we had nothing. We didn't see on television people living in magnificent houses. We didn't know anybody lived a different kind of life to us. Mm. Um, so it's a totally different now. Um, death, though, seemed to be something you had to... Yes. ..got used to. I mean, as you mentioned, you had two siblings, you lost two siblings. Even your mother was in and out of hospital after That's tuberculosis. That's right, yes. And your father then, he was off fighting in the war. No, he went to England during the war. Mm. OK. He wor went to war. Um, he was there and in another place. Tell us about... You talk yes. about it in the story about when you thought that you'd heard that he had died. Oh, yes. Um, now, when you write a memoir, it's part memory yeah. and part creation because yeah. <laughs> you get these memories and then you... Um, I, remember, I do remember this. My father liked to put it a few bob on a horse. That was one of his mm. main... And everybody then, I think, were looking for money and gambling was mm -hmm. a way, you know. Anyway, he was in England and every week you got a telegram and all loads of people around got telegram and it was five pounds for you. you. So we got our telegram and then two days later, the telegram boy came upstairs knocked at the door and he said, I'd be telegram. And Mammy said, no. We got our telegram. And he said, no, it couldn't be for us. And he said, the name is Dodo. And Mammy said, yeah, I have a telegram. And Mammy said, I, she didn't want to take it. So anyway, he, she signed it against the wall and he went off and she had the telegram. She looked at it and put it on the mantelpiece. And and I was, even though, one of the things about small children, they pick up anxiety mm. or happiness or whatever. Yeah. And she wouldn't, she wouldn't, she just said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And um, she wouldn't open it. And she said to me, your granny's coming up the stairs now because if anybody got telegraphed, everybody knew. Mm -hmm. Knew about it, yeah. And Granny came up and she said, um, what's in the telegram? And Mammy said, I don't know. And she said, well, Granny said, I'll open it. And Mammy said, you won't. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. She thought it was bad news, of course. Yeah, she would not open it. And then she took us out. Myself put the baby in the pram and we walked up to the temple, mm -hmm. which is up near Henrietta Street. Yeah. And everybody, everybody knew spread like wildfire. Um, you know, when and you'd gotten a second And everybody telegram, was yeah. looking at Mammy, and Mammy's just pushing the pram, and I was walking beside. We came back, and I said, Mam, you know, yeah. she said, no. And she it was, it was near the clock. And anyway, she eventually opened it. And I was looking at her face, and she said, I said, what well, is, is, is daddy, is daddy in, what do you, you say, he was in the clover. In the clover. The things were all yeah. right. Yeah. <coughs> and daddy in the clover. She said, I suppose you could say that. A bloody man. So they scared the life out of me. He won money on a horse. <laughs> at last. And he sent it home. He sent the money home for a good thing, but your mum thought that he was dead the whole time. Yes. <laughs> and so she then had to go down Must and see. lovely it. remembering stories like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's so many stories of that. Um, it's like a different life, something that, an that we see. absolutely different life. And one of the things that I would not like to romant romanticise it, you know? No, because you spent but, a lot of time as, a, as an education reformer in Ireland. Right. And you fought for women's rights because you grew up. It's all about I will be good. There's no I, sense of a right. woman being good. Yeah, well, being good was doing what you were told. Yeah. And doing, I will be good, but also I wanted to save the world. Yeah, mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. That's a good thing, Peg. Maybe. I didn't succeed, let's face it. <laughs> AI has come in and I have been able to stop it. <laughs> I've been trying to push it back. 
<laughs> well, you, you seem to have done uh, everything no. else. So, you, listen, I wouldn't count yourself against it as well. <laughs> so, she's uh, a gentleman flat Perfect. in North Great Georgia Street going, well, I know AI is going to be coming in, I'm going to stop yeah. it. It's a fascinating look into what life, how much has changed. It has. In I'm 80 years in this country. country. Yeah. yeah. That's but a good luck. What I would love to see coming back is we all had nothing and what we had, we shared. Mm. And there was a sense of concern, a community okay. spirit. That's you the know. bit that com really comes out. Does it? Is talk I, of I really want that, yeah. not to romanticise anything, but we need that now. We need to take care of each other. We need to. And things have gone full circle. Mm. I fought for women to go out to work. Now they can't stay at home. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. It's There's so many everything goes that way and then this way. Well, um, congratulations. Thank you. Well done. Thank you so I much. I will be good. And she <laughs> has been good. And my God, she's taken the fight to AI. She's <laughs> going to stop it all. That's exactly <laughs> what we need. Peg, Peg McMahon, it's a pleasure talking to you. It's Thank you so much. Pleasure. A pleasure. So Thank you. In the world. Uh, Didn't know we were going to get to AI on that today. <laughs> sure I'm going to be honest. Not. Didn't know that was going to happen. Uh, <laughs> listen, thank you so much for coming in. You're very welcome back. Oh, now, after a long bank holiday weekend, it's time for something fresh and pretty healthy. Yes, yeah, Susie Lee is back to show us her crunchy broccoli salad. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, delish. Yes, yeah, super easy, but we're going to balance the broccoli. Usually, broccoli salads I've tasted have raw, raw broccoli, but mm. I kind of just want to blunt oh, it no, a little bit. Oh, no, you want it a bit softer, yeah. don't you? Yeah, absolutely. So just cutting off florets, um, not too big, otherwise they're going to cook unevenly. Right. Okay. But you're only wanting to blanch them in boiling water for one minute. And you don't minute. have them very soft. See, my kids won't eat them unless they're literally Smoosh. like yeah. soggy mm. almost. No. Yeah. No, thank you. So yeah. straight into a no. boiling pot of water. So one Salted minute. Salted water as well. Does it make a difference? Yeah, like you can put salted water if you want. I am going to add seasoning to it, so okay. it doesn't really. It, can, yeah. it brings it up no to the boil quicker. Yeah. So no I'm just going to start. I'm, as yeah, we're go here. ahead. Yeah, come on. As so we're here. The vinaigrette is super simple, and it is a hundred mils of distilled vinegar or cider, apple cider vinegar. Something oh, okay. Oh my god, that's yeah. delicious. <laughs> Sorry, it's really good. <laughs> and then some red onion, and so you'll get this kind of pickled red onion mm. yeah so that's what this is Should and let then, that boil for a yeah, while so nope two minutes or so just once it turns pink so 100 mils of vinegar so distilled vinegar vinegar apple cider apple vinegar apple cider vinegar yeah two tablespoons of sugar and like half to depending how much you like onion yeah. then you put in the red and all chopped bring that to the boil so that will boil away mm -hmm. we've got about 30 seconds on that, and then we'll strain, and then we'll make the rest of the dressing. Okay. So this is a balance of natural yogurt or Greek yogurt and mayo. So you can use about two tablespoons of each, but if you like it creamier, you could add yeah, more. Yeah, loads more. Love that. Yeah. So it's up to you, or you could just use the yogurt if people don't like mayo. Right. Sorry. Okay. What is that? Just natural yogurt? Did yeah, you say? Natural Sorry. yogurt. Yeah. And I'm just going to mix that round. Okay. So once I have done that, a bit of salt and pepper here. Okay, and that's the broccoli. I love the cooking yeah. segments. We just sit and <laughs> eat away eat. while. Uh, so lovely. Why do I give out so about great. doing them so much? Oh. Like I'm going to start doing these. Are it's you actually going to eat. fight Alan for it? Yes. Mm. Considering no. he doesn't like food in any way. <laughs> yeah, he's the last I'll person you want to say. Do you want to try that? I'll have a slightly, slightly done toast. <laughs> or the peeled tea. Oh, mm. the tea. Oh, the tea. Um, they're really crunchy and you get nuts. Oh, we're getting yes. to that. Sorry. Okay. To, sorry do you sorry. want to do this better? Sorry, sorry. No, no, no. You keep on going. Because <laughs> so got... you're almost trying to find new ways to do salads in summers, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So we've it's got... not the same thing every time. The mayo, the yogurt, and then I'm using black grapes, but you can use anything. You can actually use dried fruit, but because we're in the summer, we're going to add I some... actually thought they were <laughs> olives, but the grapes would be better. Have you, have you been eating them as a other olives? No, I, 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 I actually didn't bother, I didn't want to eat one because I don't like olives. I'm not going to torture you. So you can use whole almonds, flaked almonds, you can use any kind of nut. Mm -hmm. I've toasted them in a pan or you can roast them in the oven. Just gives it some extra But seriously, crunch. what other fruit would be nice inside there? So I would use... Um, raisins. Raisins is lovely, but you don't like dried fruit, so... She's so good for remembering these things. <laughs> so, yeah, but grapes, even blueberries are actually quite nice. Oh, nice. 
Don't give me that yeah. face. Try it. Come on. Don't until you try it. She's literally just racking her brain, just thinking something there. Yeah, no, yeah. I use apricots. I use apricots oh, or yeah. cranberries. There we go, yeah. Lovely. Um, raisins or, um, yeah, the dry kind of fruit. So this is now boiled, so it's mm. lovely and pink. Mm -hmm. So... So do you kind of let that simmer right down, or do you kind of... No, you can let you can let it simmer right down so it's sticky. Mm -hmm. But yet, time is of the essence here. Yes, of course. <laughs> so you've okay. had a cooled version. Mm -hmm. So you want oh, the lovely... Oh, so you lovely... just take the uh, onions out of it. You don't pour all the sauce in. You can right. if you like a really kind of like like liquidy dressing with lots okay. and lots of broccoli. So I'm going to play around with this. And I've put the beautiful um, pink dressing in. Mm. So it's like that. And then you just toss it in. So, I, you know, you want this to cool, so you don't want roasting hot salad because yeah. it's a bit yeah. strange. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then once everything cools down, it'll only take about 15 minutes. It is ready to serve. Okay. So this That's keeps very in handy, isn't it? the fridge for about two days, but it's usually devoured. Okay, yeah. That. This is so nice. You'd even throw in a little bit of halloumi, halloumi with this to yeah, kind of halloumi. even elevate Absolutely. it a bit more. So it's really simple and like that's the tanginess I think works really well and you could have steak, you could have fish, whatever you want to the side. It's or just very have a... tangy. You could definitely the the vinegar with the sugar and the onions really comes through. Mm. Yeah, the, the pickled. So like that's as simple as it is. And if you like it creamier, add more mayo or add more um, yogurt, salt and pepper, play around with flavours. If you really like really sharp, then add more vinegar. Because it is kind of, like it is those things where it's every single week on, I'm not having that same salad again. I'm just, if I have a tomato, an iceberg lettuce salad once more, I'm going to knock myself <laughs> out in the kitchen. So it's any sort of things that you can do and introducing nuts and fruits in this way. Fantastic. Absolutely. But really yeah, the good. halloumi is really good. I'm going to steal that. Halloumi will be amazing. Mm. Yeah, halloumi maybe. has gone into every salad I've had try, for the past week. Try blueberries as well. <laughs> I'm <laughs> might try Do you know what? Really I am going to try <laughs> Wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Says your man. Uh, I thought they were olives. Well, he's such, he's such look, a they do look like olives, don't they? They don't. taste like a grape nut. Yeah, I know they taste like it, but I just saw them in there. I thought broccoli and olive salad or something. He's no. like great. Yeah, the sure. Eat this. The one Susie Lee, knows. listen, you've done very well. I'm chuffed. Thank, Thank you very you. much. It's gorgeous. This is absolutely delicious. Thank you Yay. so much. Now. Well, you read um, my I'll do this. Come back to us after the break when Derek will be revealing how you can win a luxury camper van trip. We'll see you back here very shortly. Thanks, get that over. Hello, you're very welcome back. Now, this week on Ireland M, we are celebrating Virgin Media's rollout of its two gig full fibre revolve van to more homes across Ireland. We're teaming up with Rambling Rover for a special competition, and Derek is there to show us what you can win. Derek, take it away. Yes, good morning guys. Welcome down here to Slane in County Meath. And following that cracker of a June bank holiday weekend, the sunshine is to, uh, set to stay with us now right across the week. All eyes turning to the beautiful, great outdoors. And Paul Dunn is with us now from Ramlin Rover Luxury Motorhomes. And Paul, let's start off by saying <laughs> what a gorgeous morning. Gorgeous morning. Again, you're very welcome, Slane. Thanks very much for coming down to launch this fantastic prize uh, across Ireland AM. And uh, yeah, welcome to Beaufort. We're just outside the Slane County Mead. We're at you know, Ramblin' Rover headquarters. Uh, this is our pickup point and drop off point for everybody. That's, this is where uh, all, to, all where starts all and where your, your yeah. venture is. Yeah. Now, let's talk about the business itself. When did you set up? We set up the business in March to March last year. Um, so just coming out of COVID, I suppose. Just coming out of COVID, everybody was kind of wondering what they're going to do, whether they're going to go back abroad. Um, we're obviously seeing a, a, a niche opening in the market. Uh, he could foresee the, the accommodation crisis. So being both kind of seasoned campers, it's something we lo both love doing and we said, let's do it. And, so, let's, hit, and yeah. let's hit the road. Hit and the road. it really is, has exploded over the last couple of years. It has. It's huge business. I mean, it's, it's absolutely massive. You can see by our fleet of campers here. I mean, they're all loads of respect. They're all oh, brand new. Paul, I, I had uh, a look inside yeah. there. Yeah. They're top notch. And they are yeah. top notch. You know, and, and that's spread across the country. I mean, the, the amount of campers that's on the country. I mean, it, it's a fantastic lifestyle. It's a fantastic way of seeing, uh, especially Ireland. I mean, you know, our motto is discover Ireland differently. I mean, you know, don't get in a bus. 
don't rent a car. Don't just come down and get a camper and just do the experience. Yeah, like it's a lovely way to get into like nooks and crannies, yeah. small towns, small villages that otherwise I suppose you wouldn't see. You wouldn't see. And also that from a family value point of view. I mean, if you're in that camper with your children, you have to talk, you play card games, you play <laughs> but You know what I mean? It's not all this, you know what I mean? So it, it, it's a fantastic way for families to... To, to see the country. Oh, Campsites fact. around the island as well. I mean, the standard... The standard is huge. The standard I mean, is fantastic. Like, yeah, we love camping ourselves. We, we go away quite a bit. And to go to some of the campsites in the country, I mean, they're, they're spectacular. Where would you recommend, Paul? Uh, well, if I was leaving here in the morning, I'd be heading probably straight to Donegal. I'd be going to sleep Lee. Oh, up there in the country. And sleep Lee. Beautiful, beautiful, yeah. uh, beautiful walks, bus tour, or uh, boat trips. Um, the Rusty Mackerel there, the most award winning pub. Probably from that, maybe down to Ross's Point. Nice in Ross's Point. Uh, Sligo, yeah, yeah, or gorgeous. Yeah, Eco yeah. yeah. Clifton Park the, in Clifton. Beautiful. Uh, Nagels and Doolin, beautiful campsite. Down in Clare, yeah. onto the east uh, coast the, the as well. Uh, I've spoken to Alice in Kilmore Quay. Like, it's just the most spectacular beach in Kilmore Quay. And then maybe back up to Hidden Valley or, or one of them. And then. From here on our own doorstep, I mean, like we, the beautiful mead. Like yeah, we have we're in the heart of the Boyne Valley here. We have Newgrange 10 minutes away, we have Slane Castle 5 minutes away, we have uh, Emerald Park, as it's called now. So Harry Styles might so, stay here at the yeah, weekends. <laughs> you know, so we're, so we're, we're, we're spoiled for choice. The the week, uh, bringing them up and down to Slane. So. But it's massive, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a fantastic few days away. Uh, Ukrainian family, you recently helped one out. Yeah, funny enough, just, just after we started, we got a phone call from uh, Eugene Healy. Who sort of said, yeah, how would you feel about it if we took one of your campers to Ukraine? Um, so we talked to our insurance company, and we obviously couldn't let it go in across the Ukrainian border, but uh, local company, local firm, lovely people. So yeah, they set out on a week adventure to go over to Lubov and take her mother and grandmother home, which logistically was a huge thing. Yeah, you just thing. went right and to the border. Huge, mm -hmm. But uh, they've successfully done it, and they're, they're all integrated now back home. They're all living here. It was lovely for us as well. It was obviously good exposure for us, you know. Yeah, which which is great. Uh, in terms of, of um, families then getting around the country, I mean, the weather is with us right across the week. It really is a fantastic well, way to no, explore. There's no such thing as bad weather for camping. No. You know what I mean, as I always say to people, like, you, you bring a pair of shorts if it's good, and you bring a pair of shorts if it's bad. <laughs> It's, you know, because there are no, you know, there's no airs and graces about it. You know, you're getting out, you're walking, you're in nature, you know what I mean? So, it's just, it's a different experience. The spec inside as well, they're beautiful. Incredible. Yeah, they really are, and we spec them up. I mean, they all have, um, all your creature comforts, the showers, toilets, um, smart TVs, bike racks, reversing cameras. Um, they are a luxury fleet. You know, uh, these ones here are manual version, and then we've upgrades them. Uh, we also have a fleet of nine speed automatics. Yeah. Um, that's when we're marketing into Europe and into North America. Um, they won't drive stick. Uh, so by the way, the, the World Cup is on as well. So lots of people going abroad to Europe. Yeah. So we have, I think we have four vans so far come to, go to Europe at this stage. Uh, again, a fantastic, uh, and we're pet friendly. Oh, yeah, yes, oh, so you can bring your little yeah, doggy as well. Molly, There's little Molly. Is, yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's a good thing as well because, I mean, Pet friendly is a huge, huge thing as well across the hotels and everything like that. So it's very important. So you don't have to leave your dog or your cat. Yeah, I, I could bring my two little boys in here yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> and, have a great and, and that's just a unique thing for us as well, you know. Um, All right. But I really would urge everyone to try it. You know, give it a shot. Just give it a shot. Yeah, you know, yeah. you'd be. By the way, what so happens if you get a flat? <laughs> you ring me, and I ring the man that fixes the flat. Okay, yeah, so and he'll come anywhere. And he'll come to get, get day or night. Yeah, yeah, day or night. Yeah, yeah, we we'll full twenty four hours today. All right. Yeah. Well, we do have that fantastic competition, uh, that beautiful family prize to give away. It's a luxury camper van trip for two weeks in five star camper van luxury. Take a look. This week on Ireland AM, we're celebrating Virgin Media rolling out its two gig full fibre broadband to more homes across Ireland. Virgin Media have teamed up with Rambling Rover to give away a two week five star luxury camper van trip in Ireland with add ons included for the ultimate premium experience. Explore Ireland's beautiful scenery by luxury camper van with ramblingrover.ie. Virgin Media's two gig full fibre broadband is now available to more people than ever before. So check out virginmedia.ie for more information. And for your chance to win this prize, just answer the following question. Which is the largest county in Ireland? Is it A, Cork, or B, Waterford? To enter, simply call 1550 999 319 or text TRIP to 57199. 
best of luck. Yes, so there you have it, guys. Those are the details of the competition. It is a fantastic prize. And as you said, Paul, you can bring your doggies with you. You can bring, bring your pets. You couldn't leave them at home. How could you leave them? No, at home? how could you leave them at home? <laughs> Tommy! Tommy, I believe you have a little look-alike at home as well in Monaghan. I do, Derek. I'm looking at that and wondering, is that my dog? Uh, that looks very lo I like... I know, you robbed your dog. <laughs> uh, it looks very like my little dog, Bonnie. Look at that, cute. Um, Bonnie has more of a perm. She's more 80s, isn't she? Oh, she got a haircut recently. Oh, did Denise. she? Yeah, she sure oh, did. All right. Uh, and she away. would love a trip like that in the camper van for a couple of weeks as well. Fair play to you, Derek. Um, and hopefully they get you along with it for two weeks of Derek. Wouldn't that be some crap? <laughs> Derek hired to get Absolutely, you every I come day. with the prize. We'll Great talk stuff. to you in just a little, little while. We're not giving away humans on Virgin Media. The so very best of them. We've got lots on the way for you. The Skin Nerd is here to answer your most pressing beauty questions on Love Island. It's back. Well, oh, there we go. Back, right. We're going to be unpacking. Are you ready to unpack the first episode, Tommy? Oh, I can't wait. Let's fed into it. All that plus, uh, actor Hilda Fay is going to be stopping by for a chat. Go, don't go away. We'll see you back after this short break. Hello, welcome back. And coming up in the last hour of Ireland AM. She became a household name playing Tracy in Fair City. Mm -hmm. Actor Hilda Faye is going to be here to tell us about reinventing Irish classics on stage. Absolutely. Now, the skin nerd, a.k.a. Jennifer Rock, she's here. Now, get ready for this. We're talking about brightening up one's skin. And my God, has she stayed on theme this morning. Look hey! at that. Oh, there's bright and there's Jennifer. <laughs> I'm going to talk you through exactly how to brighten your skin, get that illuminosity and get that juniors and enjoy. Wow. Delicious. Okay. That's Thank like, you. And it's not just oh, wearing God. a really bright jacket. Well, that's a really good decoy as well. It's a good decoy, yes. Option okay, sure. <laughs> We're going to learn we go. all the tricks. Yeah. Uh, now, Love Island is back, and like many of us, showbiz journalist Ali Ryan was glued to it. Ali, good morning. What did you make of the first episode? So good. They brought it back with a massive twist, which I'll be chatting about this morning. Maya Jama is back. She looks amazing. And we have some Irish in the villa, so we're off to a really good start. Ooh. Okay. So we're going to find out all about Love Island, and then we're going to get to talk yeah. about the thing we've been bed into, which is Holly and Phil. Holly essentially. And Phil. We're going to have to definitely discuss that and get Ali's take on it. On a bank time. holiday Monday, I was sitting there watching the TV yesterday morning. Going, What's going? Hello, you're very welcome back. Now, if you're like this, it's me sticking my feet up on the table. <laughs> yes. Myself Sitting relaxed like here. We were talking earlier on about uh, people are packing up on their holidays, taking crazy things with them, yep. and it seems uh, seems we've got a couple of ones. <laughs> Miriam, my husband always brought his own toilet paper when we go on holidays. He says the ones in the hotels were never any use. No, it's I'm just gonna, like sandpaper, isn't it? I'm going to go to our toilet paper expert, Tommy Bowyer. <laughs> can you understand where he's coming from, I Tommy? Can, he can understand. You, you can get the four ply surely in Spain, no? What do you mean foreplay? Like the, the quilted. Well, I'm sure you can buy it over there, <laughs> but it's the it's the toilet roll that you get over there. Yeah, no, it's not much use. So fair play to you, Marion. Fair play. Husband. How about Angela? My sister brings sausages and rashers with her. I totally get them. You can buy that in the uh, duty free in the airport. She also brings her frying pan, as the pans in Spanish apartments tend to be nonstick. <laughs> I mean, you bring a frying pan and holidays. Come on. I can totally get the sausages because you can't beat our sausages anywhere. Yeah. But I mean, to take pack the any frying laptop, pan. Any laptop, any electrics. No, no, just my frying pan. I'm all good. Yep. I yep. think uh, Caroline's taking the mickey here a wee bit. We bring a mattress with us on holidays because we can't sleep on the beds. They're all too hard. Is that one of those things where I'm going to send them in a message to see if they'll read it out and see how stupid they are? Caroline, we did. We did. There you go. Thank you, you know, for giving us your message. I've it's all there. Taking in your mattress. Um, it is, of course, the day before the leaving search and a lot of people have nerves all over the place. Sarah, our whole house is up the walls with nerves. It's the first leaving search in our home. We've been doing our best to try and keep our daughter's nerves at bay. But honestly, it's like walking on eggshells. I remember for my sister, we weren't allowed to make a sound. Uh, like yeah. we weren't and the house had to be at a certain temperature and tea had to be brought to her at certain it was so funny what was it for you it was the same nothing it was like yeah. this one is the last one we don't I give a crap don't she's, care. she's going out she's going out to the club the night before I was just too busy colouring in my study timetable <laughs> yeah. as opposed to actually doing any study <laughs> yeah. Paul my son is very nervous about leaving 30 Str sometimes struggles with exams because they're too long 
Hard to know how he'd be mm. on exam day, but just wishing and praying that he'll be okay heading into the exam exam hall. And I think that message goes to everybody. All the very yeah. best yeah. tomorrow. It's going to be a nerve wracking one, but listen, once you get the first one out of the way, you're you're flying it. They're flying it. Say us who haven't done it in over two decades. Absolutely. Listen, still bother. Don't worry about it. Now after the break, actor Hilda Fay is here. She's going to be stopping by to talk to us about getting ready to tread the boards of the iconic Irish theatre. Uh, don't go anywhere. Well, our next guest has been in everything from TV favourites like Fair City to tread the boards with The Snapper. She joins us now to discuss her latest stage and screen roles. And my God, are there a lot of them. Hilda Faye, good morning to you. How hello, are you? Hello, 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 hello. You're back after a weekend of seeing Lionel Richie. You're oh, in great yeah. form. Yeah, dancing in the park, it was great. I couldn't <laughs> believe the age of him dancing up and down the stage in his leather trousers, but he was amazing. You were into the leather trousers, I hear. I couldn't you were well get into over how tight his leather trousers <laughs> were, actually. <laughs> I was right up the front having a good air look. <laughs> 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 uh, I said to my Alan, now let the pair of trousers now for Christmas. Oh, um, Alan, you lucky joking. thing. You did poor thing. Alan get dragged up to the very front as well to watch the tight trousers? He did, so, okay. he did. Must he was looking at the tight trousers. I think he was looking at the back and singers. He was looking at the back and singers. There's something for everyone there in St. Yes, John's yeah, Park. Yeah. It was totally good. It's totally good. <laughs> um, come here to me. How are, I suppose when you go to a gig like St. John's Park where there's thousands of people, how many yeah. times do you get Tracy? Tracy, Tracy. From well, Tracy. actually, I didn't get it once, which was amazing. But uh, yeah, like I can't believe twelve years on and people are still recognising me. You know, I go how? Like you have some memories. You know, it's twelve years I haven't been there, but I think I must have one of those faces. Uh, it's an iconic <laughs> role. Can't forget it. It's an iconic role. I remember you know, people seeing, love Fair City. You I saw know? you sitting on all of a pub in Kilkee years ago, and all I could do from not shouting Tracy at you, everyone was like, "She's been gone for you. Leave her alone." I was like, "I know." I don't mind. I was very proud. I had great ten years there, and it's a great show. Great, great friends there, and everything. Uh, ten years, because then you've gone into other productions and some amazing ones mm. as well. But do you miss the kind of security? of a role like Fair City where it's week in, week in. Because now the line of work you're in, you know, it can be on and off very much so. Yeah, um, I enjoyed the security definitely. I think um, I was, I'd say I was about 10 years knocking around before I got the part in Fair mm. City. So I very much welcomed the 10 years of security and that was great. But I was very, um, I suppose I was very hungry to play other roles. I suppose you become an actor too you know, take yeah. on different roles, Challenge different challenges yourself, and yeah. stuff like that. And I was very challenged in there because I worked in theatre as well alongside that. So I was always double job and, you know, and that's before I had the kids. So, ah. and yeah. I always think of you as a theatre actress. Like I've seen you in so many things and yeah. you managed to keep both those things going. Mm. But like that, when opportunities come along to Ireland and things are being filmed here, yeah. it, it's great what can open up. And you mm. do have an upcoming, it's a BBC Showtime co-production yeah. that you've already filmed. filmed yeah. And I can't imagine how how easy something this was. It's about the Magdalene Laundry as well. It's a take yeah. on what happened there, the woman in the yeah. wall. Yeah, it's written by Joe Morta and it's led by Dara McCormick and Ruth Wilson. And Daryl from Bad Sisters, of course. Yeah. And Ruth Wilson in The Affair. Yeah. In The Affair. So, yeah, it was a heavy topic. Um, and Simon Delaney was also in it. Oh, brilliant. So I got to do some scenes with him as well. So um, I'll be doing some ADR on it this week. So I haven't seen what it's going to be like, but it was very heavy. Well, uh, you know, yeah. I, I was playing a Magdalene survivor. How do you switch off? whenever you're involved in a role like that? I don't know. I think probably when I was younger, I used to find it a little bit harder. But, uh, I, you know, I have two young kids, you know. I, I you know, <laughs> yeah. They distract you, you know. In. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just learn to shake it off, go to the gym or turn on Love Island or something like that, you <laughs> know. You just, <laughs> yeah. Oh, we've gotten it. This is, hey, listen, whatever your mindfulness yeah, is. Yeah. Lionel, you, Miss Richie and Love Island. And Love Island, yeah. which is always good. <laughs> but that's coming and there's, hot, like, the, you know. Yeah, that's going, coming. That's going to be very out heavy. in October. Yeah. It's going to be out in October, yeah. But it's then a hot you, topic. but you mentioned Simon Delaney there, mm. and you and he were in the Snapper for we a couple of years all summer. Like you all basically summer, took yes, over the gaiety. Yes. We did, um, yeah, we did two two seasons in that, and that was brilliant. Like it was brilliant to bring the Snapper to the gate. The gate was synonymous for you know Pride and Prejudice and Jane Eyre and all those kind of things. And it was the first time I think the gate's doors were open to a working class audience. I remember when I first was in the gate, I used to count the dicky bows. You know, it was a really, oh. it was a different audience, but, uh, you know, it was a working class and it was brilliant. I, I, I love that, you know. It's, it's an very effort, so good. And having Simon as well, such a character to enjoy it with as well. 
I know, I know. Like, we had great crack on that stage, you know. We had some bed scenes and everything. You, know? oh, you did, really? yeah, you did, would. yeah. <laughs> they got a good few laughs, now I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone talks about Simon here, they still talk about it. It's like, Simon used to make us breakfast. Oh, Simon yeah. was amazing. I know, he's oh, brilliant. Yeah. And he's great to have in a cast. You know yourselves. Like, yeah. he's just great fun and a good, you know, team player. Did he make you breakfast? No, he didn't. Even after your bedroom scene? No, he'd have us going up to our burger for burgers. That was it, okay. You know. No. More, much more important, all right. But like yeah. that, and even as part, because it was such a long show as well, having something like that to keep the spirits high and keep yeah, everyone yeah, motivated yeah. as well yeah. is really important yeah. too. Yeah. Um, a great guy to have around. Now, you're get, you're joined the Druid Theatre Group as well for Druid O'Casey, this yeah. trilogy coming up. Yeah. Tell us a bit more about it. Okay, well, Druid um, are based in Galway. They're a theatre company. They were kind of founded in 1975. Gary Hines is the artistic director and... Uh, they're internationally renowned. I suppose mm. they're one of our best theatre companies. You know, they have a, a, won every award in the sun, under the sun, and they're known for their cycles. Uh, mm. They've done Drew Shakespeare, they've done Drew Singh, Drew Murphy, and now they're doing Drew O'Casey. And basically, um, what it is is it's going to be a full day of theatre, and they're taking on the three, the one of the our Irish's greatest writer, Sean O'Casey, and. Um, and are three of our greatest Irish plays, and uh, they're written about the rebirth of our nation. You know, so there's three plays, The Plough and the Stars, The Shadow of a Gun Man, and Juno and the Paycock. And they're set in the 19th, 19th start with Plough and the Stars, 1916 Rising, Shadow of a Gun Man, The War of Independence, mm -hmm. and Juno and the Paycock, The Civil War. Civil War. So, oh. yeah. There's a lot going on. It's the Dublin trilogy, essentially, you know, mm. that O'Casey mm. did. And yeah. it's all about it. It's all about national identity. There's other things going on, you know, liberation movement and everything like that. But it is about national identity. And, and what Gary Hines has tried to do here is she's looking at it from a hundred years ago, essentially, on what it is now. Yeah. Drawing well, it's a, it's a really, it's a, it's a really universal, uh, they're really universal plays because they're about war. Yeah. And they're about poverty. You only have to look at what's happened in Ukraine and yeah. it's about, you know, the fallout of that and, and about communities, what it does to communities, to families. Um, uh, but like the plays are just, they're, he's, he was, he, he was a genius, mm -hmm. you know, he, um, the characters he writes, he looks from every different perspective, and uh, I'm very proud to be doing them. You know, as a Dublin woman, you know, as, as a trilogy. Then, so did you say it's all day? So do you play a couple of different parts? Yeah, I'm going to be playing um, Bessie Burgess in the Plough and the Stars, and I'm going to be playing Juno in Juno and the Paycock. Now they're the two most iconic female roles yeah. in the Irish canon. So. They've been played a lot by some amazing yeah. actresses over the years, but I don't think anybody has played those two parts in the one day. Are they very so different roles? Yeah, they're very different. Okay. Yeah, They're two diff Dublin women, but they're very different roles. And you've played Bessie before, and people I loved think, yeah. it when you played Bessie yeah. before. Yeah. Huge acclaim. So I, yeah, so it's a, it's a huge challenge for me, you know, and it's, it's a, they're two very heavy roles as and well. And the warm, hottest <laughs> time we've ever had in Ireland, ever, and you're dressing up like Peg Sayers inside in a theatre. You must yes, be sweating yeah, underneath all the shows. We have our shawls and our wool skirts and everything <laughs> to help us get into character. <laughs> yeah, but look, this, it's a brilliant team. Gary surrounds himself with a brilliant team, amazing, t uh, you know, uh, cast of actors. There's 18 actors, and mm. you have the ensemble: Garrett Lombard and Aaron yeah. and Rory Nolan, and um, you know Marty Ray, and they're just probably the best actors in Ireland. Well, this is good company. Good yeah, yeah, yeah company. amazing. Uh, Drew a theatre doing the Sean O'Casey plays, which is something uh, fantastic. Drew at O'Casey, it's making its premiere at the Galway International Arts Festival. That's the 9th until the 30th of July, and then we'll be in the Abbey Theatre in Dublin from the 26th of August until the 16th of and September. we're going to New York. Oh, we're going oh, to New York. Oh, OMG. In oh. October. Is uh, Gary getting herself another, is she getting herself another Tony Award? Uh, who knows, who knows? <laughs> there we go. And the, and the woman in the wall coming up later this year. Yeah. Though. Busy, busy woman. Yeah. Uh, Hilda Fair, thank you so much for thank coming you. in to join us this morning. Should always have time for Lionel Richie and his tight pants. <laughs> Fair play, sir. Uh, that's now, it. Still to come this morning, we are going to be discussing this morning later on the showbiz. We've also got oh, uh, yeah. Skin Nerd coming up answering your beauty questions. We'll talk to you shortly on Ireland AM. From the start of Love Island to Holly Willoughby's big return, a lot has happened in the showbiz over just the last 24 hours. Before we get the goss with Alexander Ryan, hello, Ali. Uh, here's how. Here's a look at how the summer season of Love Island, by the way, that kicked off last night. Here you go. Hello, 
Lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you. Making yourself at home already? Of yes. Course. yes. Settling. Do you have your eye on anyone already? Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> Was this the one you were hoping for? Yeah, definitely, oh. yeah. <laughs> we now have our five gorgeous couples. Have a push-up competition with the islander you think is your biggest competition. Please welcome Zachariah. Bum, bum, oh, bum. My god. It's back out oh my god! Oh my god! Please welcome someone called Zachariah. Was your man going? I can't say his name. Oh no! I love the fact oh. that the two of you are both having a debate about Maya Jama's dress already. I this love is what it's it. All she looks amazing. She's the perfect fit as a Levi like, House. She uh, definitely is. Doily. I swear, to, I just don't know why Laura Whitmore got so much crap. And Maya Jama, oh my god, she's fantastic. Yeah. I think she's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. yeah. But if Laura wore some of the stuff that Killed. Maya wore, yeah, she'd be mine. murdered. Yeah. For it just make Maya she'd gets away with it. Every time I see her on the screen. I feel like she could be in the villa though, so she does really yeah. fit. As she embodies it, yeah, yeah. completely. But yeah, it's bad. What did you make first of episode? Do you know what? I was pleasantly surprised. There's been a lot of talk about how the format needs to be freshened up, it needs to be new, it needs to be different. And last night they did a couple of things different. So, first of all, all the boys and girls were at the villa from the very beginning. They got to meet each other. That's literally never happened on Love Island. Okay. So, normally all the boys come in while the girls are lining up and they get to choose who to step forward for. That was kind of the cruel oh, way yeah, to yeah, start. Yeah. Now they all got to meet each other. And then, since last year the public get to vote the couples together which to be honest to date has worked quite well and the couples that are together now most of them are happy and um, so that was the first big twist of the Do night. We want them happy? Well you see there was a second big twist okay, of the night right, which okay. made them less happy so at the very end as you saw well, Maya no, no, walked no. back. Do they, do they vote the couples together during yes. the show? It, before the show, because we all knew the contestants ahead of us. Yeah, did it on the app and they paired people together. So <laughs> Molly and Mitchell literally look like Barbie and Ken. So they have been matched together, but people are saying they're the early contenders to win the show. They're kind of like Molly, May and Tommy. What was the second twist? So the second twist at the end of the night, so as you saw there in the VT, they got to play games and they were playing a game of dare and then mm. Maya walked in saying, I have a dare for you too. So the dare was any girl who wasn't happy with their partner step forward now. Oh. So two girls stepped forward, leaving two lads in the back and then then she announced Zachary was coming to so the third twist. So I think that might be the first time ever a bombshell has come in on the first night. But to be honest, it's needed. The yeah. format needs to change. Everyone in the villa knows, oh, I think this is the week of Casa More. You can see the people in there understanding what's going on because it's a game, it's a TV show. We really need to see it go back to basics again and confuse them. But and last not year, know last, what's going year on. last summer, to be fair, it did change a lot and they seemed to get it right. Yes. So the winter one wasn't quite the same. Who won it last year? Uh, Davide Davide and and oh, well done, yeah. sorry. Yeah. I had no idea, yeah. sorry. Um, OK, well, it is day one. We're going to be hearing a lot about that over the next couple of weeks. And Irish girl, Catherine, keep an eye out from her. She's a firecracker. She's in real estate here in Ireland. She's already really popular. She's a very strong personality. She's been coupled up with Andre, and straight away, they seem to actually be really getting on. So I think she's one to watch. She's very fiery, seems really sound, and she's Irish. We have to support Let's go, her. Catherine. Okay. Come on, yeah. you can do this. Fantastic. Uh, now, this morning, Yesterday, yes. Holly's first day back has been a pretty rocket, uh, yes. pretty crazy couple of weeks. I think we actually have a little clip of Holly's uh, opening statement. Let's take a quick look. Right, deep breath. Firstly, are you OK? I hope so. It feels very strange indeed sitting here without Phil. And I imagine that you might have been feeling a lot like I have. Shaken, troubled, let down worried for the well-being of people on all sides of what's been going on and full of questions. You, me and all of us at this morning gave our love and support to someone who was not telling the truth, who acted in a way that they themselves felt that they had to resign from ITV and step down from a career that they loved. That is a lot to process. And it's equally hard to see the toll that it's taken on their own mental health. So that was the start of it yesterday morning. It felt like something that was meant to go on for maybe two minutes and she got it done in a minute and 18 because yeah. you could tell that woman was nervous. No. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
the reaction, what's the reaction been to Holly? Because I swear to God, it was like she killed someone from I what know, I was seeing online. I know, it's like, was there a terrorist attack we didn't know about? Yeah. There was a real mixed reaction. I think half people were like, it's not that serious. Like, it's like someone had literally died. Mm. But then there's a lot of people questioning her sincerity, you know? Like, it was obviously a very polished written statement. And she only said Phil's name once. So a lot of people were like, she is gone, done, want nothing to do with it. Source in the Sun straight away yesterday said she will never, ever mention it again. Thanks. But I would just say that it's a prepared written statement. Yes. It yeah. may not seem like it because yeah. we're not very good at our job, but we do read <laughs> off an auto yeah. cue it's the norm. every single yeah. day when we start. It's literally what she has but to do. But it was do. so prepared. Of I mean, that was, it was. Like, and, yeah. and like, it, like so For much. For legal reasons too. Can you too? imagine yeah, exactly. the amount yeah. of people that statement had to go yeah. through? To, and the to, thing is, like, you have to understand the amount of money Holly is on, yeah. not just for her own life of being a superstar, but for ITV, she is the star. They have yeah. to protect her. She has to protect herself. Um, I was saying to you guys off air before, like, this was the worst kept secret in showbiz, okay? So everybody knew something was going on. Really? Everybody had heard a rumour. No one knew about age or anything, but everybody knew there was some runner who got moved off the show. It was talked about for the last three years. So the thing that people have to remember is, I think when they're watching the show, they just take it as it is. But these people are highly paid people. They're reading off a script. At the end of the day, it's a job. And I think it's become so personal to everyone. That's why Holly was like, are you okay sitting at home? Are you okay? Do you okay? think she can recover from it? I think so far she's doing quite a good job, to be honest. She hasn't killed someone, she right? We're aware someone. of this. At the end of the day, we don't want to punish a woman for something a man did, because, like, you know, we've been doing that but for years. But it does feel like the irony of them yeah. being in a clip on The Morning Show with Jennifer yes, Aniston I and know. the same thing. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. Like, so they were in this like clip and then Jennifer Aniston was blamed for what happened with Steve Carell in The, the Morning is, Show. It's a, it's a highly pressurised environment and a lot of people would say, including Holly, that Phil is the reason she got on the show. Like, Phil was very much like, I want Holly. He brought but her in. But that happened. And that happened. So I think maybe she feels less personal hmm. allegiance to him. I think she handled it well. Like, how much more can she yeah. say? What but can I don't, she do? I actually don't know about her career yet. But I think even Eamon Holmes, time. as well, is still on a vendetta against Eamon him. As well. What is Eamon's delighted. issue? My God. Absolutely yeah, I think at the end of the day, look. It's not a secret that a lot of people did not like Phil in, yeah. in this morning. Like, a lot of people said he wasn't nice to work with. So I think everyone's just jumping out now on him and attacking him. But Well, it was Holly having to throw to Ruth on this, oh. on Loose Women yesterday. I was like, go on, say it, Holly, oh, say it. Oh, and here's just, Ruth. Your husband isn't a I big fan of mine at the minute. I'd just be yeah. like, cut, cut, cut. Uh, <laughs> oh, I wanted to say it. Uh, Ali anyway. Ryan from Goss ID, thank you so much. There's still a lot more even we didn't get no, through. but there is so uh, much we'll more. Get, we'll get through more of this. And Holly will be coming thank up you. at 10 a.m. right here on Virgin Media. After the show. we finish, after we talk to the skin nerd who can get us glowing through the pain of get online on to look like Holly with their glow. Go to Portugal. It's great look, glow. We'll talk to you in a while. See you back here in a minute. Hello, welcome back, where we're all enjoying the sunshine. Our skin can get dehydrated if we're not being careful. And who better to help us out with what to use? You can see her green sleeves coming in here. <laughs> skin nerd herself, Jennifer Rock. Good morning Good to morning. you, Jennifer. Let's get straight into yes. these questions. Carrie has sent one in. My skin has been getting really dry as the weather's gotten summer. Moisturiser every day, but it's not making a difference. What should I do? Do you know what's interesting? A lot of us lean on serums, moisturisers, spritz, sheet masks for hydration, but actually our cleanser is probably one of the most important steps because we tend to, so this is our first one. I'm actually colour coded and matched to it, oh, as wow, you can see here. Oh, hello. Matchy, matchy. <laughs> so this is Image Skincare. This is their newest range. It's their Biome Plus range. They have a cleanser, they have a serum, there's a moisturiser. This is their cleanser. So essentially, it's all about getting good bacteria back into the skin, extremely hydrating. It's If you put it on a little bit more than that, Tommy, you can be a bit more generous to hey, yourself. Hold on. Oh, it's not even open. It's not open. Ta -da! So when you open it fully, um, you take it out, it's like a cream mm. and it turns into, do you like it? Does yes, it feel divine? Really. I promise you when it is actually fully opened, my bad. <laughs> um, it's a beautiful, it's a melting product. It takes off makeup beautifully, really hydrates the skin, gives back to the skin. This is their cult product of their three that they've just recently launched. Yeah, it's got a zesty, yeah. she's, she's invested, uh, zesty citrus scent to it. Plant oils in it, squalene, really hydrating. So... Back to the question. Okay, if you really wet. want to have like a, a difference in your skin, hydrate the skin, starting with the cleanser is as important as a moisturizer. Okay. Every morning, every isn't it beautiful? And it really does like a lit, like it, but it turns into a beautiful oil, like it's a beautiful experience whilst it's giving back to the skin. So definitely and want to limey flavor. It's got like a citrus zest. I think it's beautiful in the morning. I citrus use it this morning, zest, like wake me up. So zest. yes, and it really nice. is a okay. makeup okay. removal. There you go, Carrie, that's you sorted. Uh, Neve said my twelve-year-old daughter has very dry skin as well. She's very conscious of it. The product. Yeah. She has been using haven't been working so okay. 
if this doesn't work, what else can you use? So Liz Earl, a known brand. It's a boots brand now for many a year. This is ideal for a really dry skin. It's really lightweight. Tommy, put it on the back of your hand, please. Down okay, the right. Beautiful Here we go. Set home. Oh, look Liz Earl. Uh, it's scientifically proven. has a new ingredient oh, in it, which is called snow mushroom. No, you didn't. That would be ideal. And this will go from your collarbone up. So suitable for 12-year-olds, as we're talking about here. Okay. Right way up to 90s. Really a quick fix of sheer hydration, but beautiful in the summer because it's so lightweight. So if you want to have, like I'm brightening myself up today, but if you want to feel hydrated, and that immediate dewiness, that is how you do it, exactly like that. It's a double concentrate, which means it hydrates the top layer of your skin. But honestly, in a couple of hours' time, you'll see a difference between both hands. Obviously, you usually put it on your face. This will really feel hydrated. It's hydrating superficially and deeper down. And that is why it that. works. And what a difference. What a difference. What it was. <laughs> this one. Put it on the other one. I think we're really calmed out. Suitable really for someone as young as 12. Se se exactly. Someone really sensitive, a like okay. someone as young as 12, really is ideal for it. Um, um, it's Leaping Bunny. It's extremely safe, vegan friendly. It's just a, it's a phenomenal brand. Really great, affordable, hydrating lovely. option for a 12 um, Kelly has sent in a question. Good morning, Kelly. And she says, lately my skin has been feeling dull and unhealthy. Do you have any suggestions of what I can do to brighten it up a bit? Uh, and this is a tough one. At this time of the year, I think we're trying to lean on a little bit less makeup if we are makeup wearers. Yeah. So Sasta is a relatively new Irish brand that I'm really proud to be representing here today. It's always great to get behind the Irish. It's guaranteed mm -hmm. Irish. Yeah. This is based on prebiotic, postbiotic. It's all about the good biotics within your skin. So what is phenomenal about this is it has a lot of science behind it. It has a lot of studies behind it. it took them three years to make this particular product. So it's called the Sostum Microbiome Booster Serum 9. Microbiome. So we've got biome here yes. and microbiome so here. So when so you're trying to brighten it. the skin and hydrate the skin, it's all about actually protecting and really looking arm, after the skin. Right? You can, absolutely. You can this is honestly... This is your first day doing all the yeah, hand stuff. Your he's hand's a pro. Be amazing. Well, hand model. for your face. <laughs> So generally, it is, isn't it? but this actually restores the skin. So it's, you do generally have a little bit of redness and sensitivity on the hands. So if you have that on the face, ideal for really calming it. It maintains the skin. It helps defense with the skin. It hydrates the skin. Brilliant for pigmentation. Oh, so a lot really? of us get during the summer months a lot of kind of darkening that we might call freckles, but it's actually pigmentation. So back to this question: If you feel your skin is dull, tired, lethargic, and you have got freckles that come from the sun, mm -hmm. this is definitely one to consider. Beautiful lightweight lotion, apply it AM, PM, and it really Where does make a difference. Where would you apply it in your routine? Good question. I cleanse. I usually leave my skin wet. I don't actually dry my skin after I cleanse, so that if your skin's wet, you'll get better penetration. Yeah. Then I go in at my serum. Nice to have as well, so cares for the planet. Okay, Maria has said the weather has uh, recently been great for tanning. Is there something I can use to help highlight my tan and make it last longer? So. Tanning in general is a controversial one, like, right? So, so, yeah. Sorry, so, she's not going to like this. I have to, I have to I'm with you on this, Maria. So my get poor son tan. has a t-shirt at home for when he's little saying a tan is a scar. Now, that will get me in trouble for saying it, but your tan is your body's way of defending itself from the elements. Mm. So I'm a big, big, big believer in fake tan, as we know. So what you can do, there's definitely makeup options that kind of give a luminosity, which we'll talk about, and then there's fake tanning drops that we'll talk about as well. So but just is there anything there this, to prolong the tan, Jennifer? Um, hydrating the skin is definitely the goal, perhaps not exfoliating as often as you might okay. usually write it. That was my flight what, answer. What, uh, hydra tint then? <laughs> We're a big fan of Sculpt by Amy on this show. Amy is just trailblazing it. This is her relatively new launch. Couple of weeks now. I've had the luxury of using it for a good few weeks. Really lightweight, beautiful dewy finish. It's essentially a skin product with a little bit of, like a little bit of a tint of a kind of like a primer vibe to it. There's 20 different shades. It's barely there. Show it to the camera because it generally has, like it's so it's so subtle. So that's so a if, scar there that's you covered put, it up nicely. Nice but if you put good? it on one side of your face and not the other, which I've done on social over the last few weeks, you can really see that it just blurs out imperfections. It's 90% of a skincare product, so well think about more Amy. skincare with a little bit of tint. Um, and it has lots of hydrating Lovely. ingredients and in there. And the final one that you have there. Tan Organic, another Irish, phenomenal Irish, knocking out of the park this morning. This is their anti-aging facial tan serum. More, now be careful of this one, because this one is a tan product. Okay. So Miriam's getting this one. So a couple of drops all over the face. It goes on clear. You put it on with your hands or with the brush. It's a beautiful texture to it, as you can see. Can you, now, put it on, can you mix it with your much. moisturizer? You can. I'm not usually a fan of tan on the face because it can cause a lot of blackheads, irritation, sensitivity. This does not. It's a fast drying lotion that gives a beautiful glowy, <clears throat> excuse me, oh. sun kissed finish. Make Never sure mind. you do wash your hands after. But it has matrixyl in there, which are peptides. It has uh, like apple stem cells. Really, really anti aging product, which is very unusual. Oh, anti aging. What about that glowing skin? You will be glowing. With this, need. you'll definitely be glowing. And you just feel like I have it on this morning underneath my foundation and I just feel fresh. You know, when you get up at five in the morning and you just want to feel alive. 
have we that as well. Fresh. Jennifer, I love it. Also Thank you. Skin Thank you so Thank much, you so darling. Much Cheers. For that. That's all Fantastic. from us this morning. Where are we looking? Um, uh, on tomorrow's show, it's been 30 years since the decriminalisation of homosexuality in Ireland. We're taking a look back on the progress we've made since then and what still needs to be done. Uh, Brian Lloyd is going to be here with all the movie releases, and we've got lots, lots more, including a bit of gardening. Lovely. You did loads about gardening this weekend. Love it. We'll see, see you, you back tomorrow. here tomorrow at 7. I need to wash my hands.